the Blade Runner Blaster, perhaps in my opinion the most iconic handgun in film history. Here's a little edit of my history with the Blade Runner Blaster. Right, now that we've established that, behind me in the prop department are more than a dozen Blade Runner blasters. And Blade Runner prop master Doug Harlocker is going to give me a tour of them, both the old blasters that they've remade for this movie and the new ones that they've designed for it. Let's go look. Okay, I mean, most people when they think of Blade Runner, they tend to drift their mind over the blaster. It's such an iconic piece, and you guys have replicated the original blaster as well as some new ones. Can you talk me through the process? Sure. You know, we, we contacted the person who owned the original blaster. He got it, I guess he bought it at auction years ago. He's a good friend of mine. Yes, Dan. And, uh, and so we, we studied his intensively, and we basically backed into ours that way. So we built them from scratch, I will say, uh, for the most part, by the end. We made um, replicas uh, and um, rubber ones, of course, for our stunt people. Oh, this so you is can one see, of the rubber ones. That's one of the rubber ones. Wow. So the paint, as you can see. That so is... we went from very lightweight yes. to the replica, which is heavy which is yeah to the we built real ones with a styro rifle receiver mm -hmm. and the bulldog that's even heavier than this oh yeah, yeah. I, I, so um harrison who basically hurt his wrist a, a little while ago was like mother of god <laughs> you know <laughs> that is like give me the rubber one no you got to use the replica no you got to use the real one now you know so he's he uh you know it's all coming back to them, the weights and measures of it. Sure. This is, sorry, I'm just completely gobsmacked that this is rubber. This weighs yeah. six or eight ounces. And, and again, this is the, the, the beauty of paint finishes now, right. is that you can really replicate. Um, the metallics really are, are there for you. I'm blown it's away. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, this is the next generation uh, blaster, of course. The original blaster had a real uh, bulldog um, revolver in it, mm -hmm. so it could blank fire. Yeah, it could a big muzzle flash out of that. Um, we tried to design around smaller revolver, uh, so we could get a real muzzle flash out of this gun. We found that we started started to get a little fat, a little too big, and we wanted it to have maintain a little bit of an elliptical feeling. And you can see this this now how we really wanted to maintain some. You know, kind of it's a big gun shape. on the side, yeah. but it's actually got a nice profile in the, in the beginning. So in the end, we decided uh, uh, form over function, mm -hmm. <laughs> that we would prefer to keep it um, as a perfect design and not have to worry about uh, making it all, you know, misshaped by putting a real gun in it. So we'll, uh, it'll be a CG mu muzzle flash. Okay. And that. I'm, uh, I, from the way, you dis the way you're talking about it, you not just uh, constructing it, but deeply part of the design process and iterative process as well. We, you know, we spent a lot of time, of course, big responsibility going from an iconic handgun to the next generation of that gun. So we, yeah, we took our time and, you know, we wanted to make it as interesting as possible. This was a, an iteration of a design that started, you know, six generations early. In mm -hmm. other words, we mm -hmm. went through lots of design changes until we got to it. Um, and, you I, know, we, of course, give it a little bit of age, give it a little bit of, you know, Denise uh, really likes the brutal concept of it, of, of this, his movie, love the brutal aspect of the last movie. And so, you know, he really wanted it to feel like it was... A handled... Well piece. used. Yeah. Uh, I also really, I like the, uh, you know, the, the, the front piece of the original blaster is so, so different than a normal pistol and yeah. a normal gun. Um, it was, I remember making sketches of the VHS on freeze frame mm -hmm. when I was 18 and trying to figure out all these different parts. And you guys have really, 
upgraded and still carried forward that kind of unique profile? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. You know, you've, it's, uh, a lot of people have been designing guns the last 15 years or so, 20 years, and really coming up with some great concepts, um, District 9 and mm -hmm. different people that are really coming up with great finishes and great, you know, just really unusual designs. So it's, so it's, the pressure's it's, on. it's hard, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, we did Oblivion and Oblivion had, again, coming up with a handgun and a rifle and different variations of that thing. It's another movie that everything we designed, everything we made was designed. Absolutely. And so I, so, didn't um, know you, I love the guns in Oblivion. They're yeah. wonderful. Um, and this, this has a little um, lighting component. So there is oh. a little, just one little LED. And basically I oh, put nice. a, little, a little piece in there so that when it fires, there's a, a little, right, right. We, can, we can get a little something. I know it seems. Oh, it's an electromagnet. Um, so, okay. There you go. Oh, cool. So oh, at least we see, see some functionality. There. Yes, and you see you, just something that the audience can take a look at. It's just not an inanimate object. And you again, know. you've got the little light that's, I mean, you've, you've, you've really something. tried to address the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the iconography. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. And again, all of these we make um, as stunts as well. Rubber and real, and you'll see a lightweight one there as well. Right. Wow. That's <laughs> again, it's but crazy. the finishes, you, you know, it's it used to be the rubber, yeah. you could never match the finishes. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's, we're getting, you know, the finishes are right there. And this is know. because also the materials technology and the painting technology are. Yes. Yeah. Certainly the, the quality of paints and the, the paint techniques and the painters out there becoming very skilled. It's great. Uh, yeah. Doug, having made my own Blade Runner blaster from scratch, it took me about four years of working up the nerve to mill every surface in a little bit, and mm -hmm. it's, it's nerve-wracking, and they're all different hardnesses. Mm -hmm. um, it's thrilling to see so many of them all in one place. Thanks for, thanks for showing me all the toys. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, are you going to try and make one of these now? Is that your... Uh, I, I probably. No, I'm kidding. No, well, I, you know, probably. I just want to visit your answer. shop now and see you know, <laughs> what, you're, what you're working on. You'll have to come by. All right. Well, this is a pleasure. I know, I seemed a little subdued in there. Look, the fact is, Doug is such a legend. I'm such an admirer of his work, and it was so overwhelming to see all those blasters in one place that I tried really hard not to become a screaming fanboy. But Doug has told me that I could have another few minutes with the blasters, and I'm gonna take it.